In this first video on our five part series on object oriented programming, we introduce some basics including classes, objects, instantiation and class diagrams. Object oriented programming or OOP attempts to capture or group information, data and related functionality into structured items known as objects. With OOP, the world is viewed as a collection of objects. An object could be anything, such as an animal, a person, a car, or a house. It could also be way more abstract, for example, a customer's account or a data structure. Each object is responsible for its own data and the operations performed on that data. Objects interact with each other by sending and receiving messages. So take this light bulb for example. What characteristics does it have? Well, it has a wattage, in this case a, a 40 watt light bulb. It has a color, so white let's say. It has a type, so this is an old style filament light bulb. It has a connection type, so this is a screw fixture. Once we've identified the information and actions relating to an object, we can place them into their own class. All classes have three main sections. We have the name of the class at the top. We have the class's attributes, i.e. all the information shared by any object of this class type. You can think of these like variables. And we have its methods, i.e. the code associated with the class that allows you to access or change its attributes. And you can think of these broadly as subroutines. This is what's known as a class diagram. You can think of a class as a blueprint used to set or define what attributes and methods an object of a certain type should have. Now this is really important to understand early on. A class is not an object in itself. It is just the template we use so that every object we make from that class will look the same. This is one of the advantages of OOP. Once you define a class, you decide what attributes and methods it will have. It becomes very easy to reuse that class and create hundreds of objects of that class. Here's another example. We've got a toy tank. Remember, this class doesn't yet represent any real instance of a toy tank. It just tells us what all toy tanks need to look like. We can see that each tank needs a colour and a name. To create a copy or an instance of a class, we use a single line of code using the keyword new. This is called instantiation, the process of creating an object from a class template. We have instantiated or created three objects of the class toy tank. These are now three separate objects that exist as part of our program in memory. Each object has its own copy of the attributes and methods from the class template. Object oriented syntax will vary from language to language. This version is generic pseudocode, allowing us to cover key features without worrying about variations in language specific syntax. The class starts with a keyword class followed by the class name, in this case, toy tank. To end the class definition, we use the keyword end class. The attributes for the class are listed next. The keyword private will be explained in a later video. There are four methods for the toy tank class. Two for getting the tank's color and name and two for setting the tank's color and name. You may have spotted that there is a fifth method at the top. This special method has the keyword new in its header 
after the word procedure. This is known as the constructor method. Every class will have a constructor method, a special method within the class that runs when an object of that class type is created. When the object is instantiated or created, the constructor method takes the values of the parameters that have been passed in to the toy tank object and uses them to set its local attributes, its colour and name, to their initial values. All the code shown here defines the toy tank class template. These three lines of code are the ones that instantiate or actually create three separate toy tank objects. We have created three separate instances of the toy tank class, each with its own separate set of private attributes. Tank 1 is blue and he's Trevor. Tank 2 is red, Tim. Tank 3 is green, Tony. Now these three separate objects exist in memory, we can use a simple dot syntax to call different methods. So what do you think each of the lines of code in the table there will actually do or output? Pause the video and see if you can work it out. Well, there's the answer. Hopefully you got those right. You can see we provide the name of the actual instantiated object. So tank one, tank two, tank three. Then we use a dot and then we give the name of the method and that accesses the particular method from that object, that version of the class that we instantiated. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What is the difference between an object and a class? Thank you.